Welcome to ADP Training, YouTube's automotive technology channel. In this channel, you'll learn all kinds of auto repair secrets, how your automobile works, and how to diagnose it. Hello everybody, welcome to another video. In today's video, we are going to talk about um, amplitude measurements. Now, as you can see on screen, uh, this is what the signal generator looks like. Our frequency down here, as you can see, it's uh, 700 hertz, 706 hertz. Okay, so uh, you may you may be. Uh, uh, actually uh, listening to that, that tone right now as we change the frequency so this is like 2000 Hertz 945 Hertz okay that's the frequency All right now this is a signal a sine wave signal now we're gonna what we're gonna do right now is we're gonna show you on this on this side here this is channel 1 Okay, this is pretty much all scopes are the same way. So this is channel 1 and this is channel 2. Okay, now when it comes to uh, magnetic signals like this one, okay, uh, and that's that's what they look like. They're rounded signals, the, 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 the crests of them are rounded like that. That's called sine waves. Uh, now this tells you that the, the sensor itself is a two wire sensor right away. Okay, you it's not going to be three wires or four wires, whatever. You know, it has to be two wire sensors. Okay. Now, it's important that this distance between the bottom and the top has to be uh, a specific uh, amplitude. But that's why this is this is called uh, amplitude measurements. Okay. Uh, in this particular case, it's a uh, voltage peak to peak over here. Okay. Uh, and it's uh, almost one volt peak to peak. Okay. 999 millivolts okay uh, this has to be higher than that okay if it is to be recognized uh, by the ECM or whatever module um, it's actually listening to that particular sensor now if we go over here we can actually change um, let's see if we can change the uh, the amplitude over here we can go all the way up. Let me see if it goes up to one, all the way up to one volt. Yeah, that's it. So now it's uh, it's two volts peak to peak. Okay, two volts peak to peak now. Okay, now this is important. Again, I'm going to repeat myself. I don't think we can go higher in this particular signal generator because it just works off of the computer. Uh, so it'll give you you know one volt peak to peak. Uh, actually, two volts peak to peak. Okay. Now usually what you do is this here okay and this is a cursor measurement this 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 oscilloscope already gives you the peak to peak voltage which is nice okay it's nice uh, but in this particular case uh, uh, you know you can also do the measurements using the cursor as you as you see in here okay now and right you know right away you see over here 2.24 uh, uh, volts peak to peak okay now uh, uh, it's important, uh, and th these two numbers here are, are the positions of, of the cursors. You know, you can also you can also measure it, measure the time, but we're not going to go into that in this video. Okay, so so basically, why is this important? Okay, and this uh, we did a, a live video not too long ago that we explained that why is it important? Because if it's not big enough, if if, if the amplitude is not, you know, the swing has to be. At least for a, for a um, for a magnetic signal to be recognized has to be at least 3.5 volts, if not more. Okay, I like to see more than three, more than three volts. Um, a lot of these uh, signals, the the voltage you know expands and contracts. Okay, like this. Let me see. This is this is the timing. So the voltage, it would look like this. See, it expands and contracts depending on. You know, on the f on the speed, I'm just playing around with the with the with the amplitude here, just to show you what what it looks like. 
Okay, so if you're going to go, say for example, this was a wheel speed sensor, this is what it would look like, okay, and as you go faster and faster, it'll do this, and it'll do that, okay, it'll change, it'll change the amplitude, okay, uh, the faster you go, the wider the amplitude, okay, uh, uh, and so you're looking for that, it has to be above 3 volts, okay, uh, that doesn't apply to a square wave, which is the next wave that we're going to show you. Okay, so this is a sine wave, S-I-N-E, sine wave. It's important that you understand it so that you learn how to test specific sensors. Uh, some of my viewers tell me, well, uh, we'll just swap it, you know, with another sensor. Okay, fine, but if you're going to swap a sensor, it'll take you an hour and a half to, and some sensors are, are they take you forever, you know, to, to swap them. Because if they're, they're unreachable, they're hard to reach or whatever, you know. Uh, the right way to do it is to do proper testing. That way, uh, your repair comes out right, okay? Now, we're going to change the, the, the signal here, and we're going to use, uh, uh, rather than sine wave, we're going to do a square wave, okay? Uh, over here, you have triangle waves, uh, square, which is what we're going to use, and then you saw sawtooth, white noise, uh, pink noise, and, for, and a formula, so that you can, you know, make the whatever wave you want. But we're, gonna, we're not going to go into that. We're going to do square wave, okay? And this is what a square wave looks like, okay? Now, if we get rid of the cursors, push them aside, this is what it looks like, okay? Right. Now, it's the same way. As you increase the, f the, the, say for example, if this was a crank sensor, if you were to increase the, the RPM, it would do this. Okay, it would do that. It would, you know, that's what you would see. Now, of course, the crank sen sensor signal, uh, sometimes it has a longer notch down here to uh, signify a uh, top that's, that's centered for cylinder number one, but we're not, we're not going to go into that. Okay? The one thing that I wanted, just wanted to let you guys know is that this little, this little star here, this means something, okay? This is a trigger. So if you if we put this thing outside, okay, then it's not triggering. Right now, the the waveform is all over the place. So we're talking about the trigger, okay? So now the trigger has to be somewhere in the wave, okay? Somewhere in that wave. Otherwise, it's not going to trigger. So long as it's along this line here, that's what we're looking for. If we if we go out of it, you know, then the signal is not synchronized. So it's not going to trigger. You're not going to be able to see it steady, okay? And if you look at the over here, the trigger. See, there is no if it, if there is no trigger, like now, okay, you're not going to see the trigger indicator, okay? Now, let me see. Now there is a trigger. Okay, okay. So it's triggering. Now there's also two ways to trigger: rising edge or falling edge. This is the rising edge. Why? Because it rises from zero all the way up. And this is not really zero because this is a this is a, a, a an AC um, uh, signal that the signal generator over here is producing. Okay, but it doesn't really matter. Yeah, you know. Basically, what, what it is is that uh, if you do rising edge, it'll trigger on the rising edge, okay? If you do it on the falling edge, then it'll switch. See how it switch? Now it'll do it on the falling edge. Sometimes you need that. For example, if you need to correlate, uh, the car is stalling when something happens, okay? And as soon as it happens, the, the vehicle stalls. We're talking about really complicated diagnostics. Uh, where you would look at the crank sensor, cam sensor, and another, maybe a couple more signals, you know. Uh, and so, basically, you're looking at when is this happening. Uh, sometimes it's just when uh, uh, shift solenoid on the transmission uh, turns on, okay. You have to really know what you're doing, and you ha that's why you need the falling and uh, the rising and falling edges, okay. Uh, very, very important. Um, it is... Uh, sort of, uh, um, you know, a little complicated, uh, but it doesn't really matter. It is what it is. You know, you have to really learn it, at least for oscillosc oscilloscope usage, okay? And so basically, uh, that's pretty much 
all I can say as far as uh, measurements, uh, when it comes to amplitude measurements, amplitudes, amplitude is n not horizontal, it's vertical measurements. Okay, vertical me measurements. And you go to it with the, you know, with the cursors, that's how you measure, you know, that's how you measure the uh, uh, properly, okay? And again, uh, uh, rule of thumb, uh, it's in my book, uh, Automotive Sensor Testing, okay, Automotive Sensor Testing, uh, you can look at it, uh, buy from my website or from Amazon as a download or as a printed format, if, whatever you want, okay, uh, so we have it on our website, autodiagnosticsandpublishing.com, uh, or do a search on Google for Automotive Diagnostics and Publishing. Okay, and that uh, we have a bunch of stuff. We have we also design and manufacture our own uh, 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 testing uh, rigs, you know, uh, equipment. So if you want to, um, uh, you know, source uh, a source of tools, you know, we or we can also help you out in that respect. Okay, uh, so anyhow, going back to this thing here, uh, the uh, amplitude. Uh, uh, or the way you measure amplitude is also important uh, when it comes to uh, f uh, PWM, uh, pulse width modulation. Okay, almost everything in the car is controlled by PWM. Okay, now PWM in this particular case, this is a 50% duty cycle PWM, right? So let's see if we could change it. Let's see if we could go 10% duty cycle. Okay. Uh, something changed because I heard it. This is a 10% duty cycle. Why? Why is it a 10%? We're not going to go too much into duty cycles here. Uh, but we're going to just, you know, touch upon it on duty cycles. Okay, so why is it 10% duty cycle? Because the only, the only uh, side of the, of, of the wave that's actually doing something is this little side right here. This, this little, you know. Half of, of the wave is negative, the other half, no, not the other half, the other 10% is positive. That's what it means, 10% duty cycle. Duty cycle is always expressed in uh, percentages. Now, we're going to leave it at that because we don't want to confuse you too much. Uh, suffice it to say that uh, this is, you know, uh, this is what uh, we mean by amplitude uh, modulation and amplitude measurements, okay? Uh, in, in cases like, for example, if this was a signal uh, for the uh, fuel pump, okay? If this was a fuel pump signal, okay, you would see something like this, okay? Uh, I say idle. Uh, but as you increase speed, because you need more fuel as you increase speed, then you're going to see something like this, okay? You're going to see something like this. You're going to see the exact same duty cycle, but you're going to see the frequency increase, Okay, uh, we have a PWM by directional controller on our website that does exactly what we're see, what you, we're showing you here. Okay, it does exactly this, uh, and that's the reason for the reason for that is that um, basically you can actually you can control almost anything with that unit. Okay, uh, and so anyhow, so this is uh, all we can say for for, you know, for now as far uh, as far as duty cycle. Okay. Usually, uh, signals are 50% duty cycle, okay? Now, 50% duty cycle, going back, it's half and half. So, half of the signal is the same as the negative side. So, the positive side is the same as the negative side. That's, fi that's a 50% duty cycle. Anyhow, so that's all there is for now as far as... Uh, uh, Amplitude measurements and a little bit about duty cycle uh, that we touched upon because it has to do with that. Uh, and uh, so we'd like to thank you for tuning in to our channel, uh, ADP Training. Uh, visit our website. We are always giving out free stuff, you know, uh, free books, free this, free that, free software. Um, if you... Um, uh, if you if you subscribe to our website, we every month we send out uh, emails, you know that uh, that actually give you free stuff, you know. Uh, anyhow, uh, so we like to thank you for tuning in to our channel, uh, ADP Training, uh, and um, uh, here on, on YouTube. And thank you for watching. Hello everybody and welcome to another video. 
In today's video, we are going to talk about uh, oscilloscope frequency measurements. Okay, so uh, let's start uh, on the uh, frequency generator that comes in with the, with, with the scope. We're going to click channel 2, okay, and channel 2 is going to be outputted to channel 1 of the scope. So you can see it over here. See, this is the output. So um, now we're going to synchronize the amplitude so that we can actually see it okay and we're going to increase the output as much as possible okay and again synchronize the amplitude so that we can see it on the screen okay now this is good enough now what exactly uh, are we talking about when we and by the way every scope has this particular feature every single scope on the market okay since the beginning of time since the 1940s okay so now you have over here you have amplitude measurements which is voltage or it could also be current and we also have time measurement okay and that's what we're going to talk about now the time measurement as you can see here it's in uh, milliseconds up to 10 seconds okay so we're going to go for example we're going to extend it reduce it or extend it okay let's talk about right now we're going to go, let's put the uh, the trigger, we're going to put it over here, okay? This is a rising trigger, so it's going to trigger at the beginning of the cycle, and we're gonna, now we're going to talk about what exactly is a cycle. Let's see if we can uh, increase a little bit more. Okay, good, this is good enough. This is perfect, actually, you know. Now, what exactly is uh, frequency measurement? Okay, this is a zero line, okay? As you can see, this is an AC signal. Uh, we don't, there's no capability on this particular uh, uh, unit, as far as we know yet, you know, we don't know. I don't know yet, because I, have, I haven't messed around with it. I don't think it could, it could output a DC, okay? But it doesn't really matter. So, the cycle, okay, starts here, where the X, the trigger, the X trigger is at. This is the going up, rising, going down to zero again. This is half a cycle, going all the way down and then up again and this is it from this point up to the the trigger point this is one cycle okay now uh, we could also take measurements okay so in this particular case let's measure the cursors okay now let me see if we could do it we're gonna go and measure time okay and this is the, the measurement okay we're gonna go from the beginning of the cycle to the end of the cycle okay and that's pretty much how we calculate uh, uh, how we actually measure okay in this particular case this is four, 443 almost 444 um, uh, Hertz signal okay as you can see it says it over here 440 okay so that's the signal we're measuring between the beginning of the cycle okay just right, right around here to the end of the cycle this is one complete cycle as you can see it here okay it also tells you here that it has a 2.7 millisecond um, a time okay this is the point between here and here again it's important why is it important for example uh, now this is actually in one of my books um, on, on using uh, equipment uh, whenever you have let's say for example you have a vehicle that doesn't give you uh, the fuel pump is weak the, the vehicle is really sluggish it doesn't have any codes what what is the problem how do you determine that the fuel pump is faulty okay so you have to do what you're seeing right now okay you have to take somehow okay otherwise you'll never know you're, you're gonna replace the you're going to place 50% of the parts and you're going to think it's a massive flow is this and that it's not okay you're going to replace a whole bunch of parts and you're not going to know it's a fuel pump and this this is it's the same for almost any like motor or, or what have you you know so in this particular case by measuring this time here between here and here okay you would know okay uh, if it's a fuel pump or not okay so in between the cursors, these are cursors, okay? Uh, basically, you by determining the, the, the time 
Okay, then you have to do a, bu- a whole bunch of calculations, which is not too hard. You simply have to uh, multiply by 60, because it's 60 seconds in, in a minute. And then if you want to go the, the, the fuel flow per hour, then you have to multiply by 60 again, uh, which is 60 minutes uh, uh, in an hour. Okay, uh, so uh, basically that's how you go about, you know, doing this, this thing here. Okay, it's important that you understand how to measure... Uh, the frequency and the time of a, of a specific uh, waveform. Okay. Now let's switch, for example, into square wave. Okay. I'm going to switch into a square wave. Uh, as you can see, that the the tone changed because it's a square wave. It's a little different. Okay. Now we're going to go. It's the same deal. Uh, the, really, the frequency hasn't changed. What changes is the shape. Uh, of the waveform, which is a square wave. You know, everything else is the same. You still, the cycle starts here, up, down, and then up again to this halfway point, in between the cursors, you, you know, right, right, around, right around here. Okay? That is the complete cycle, whether it's a square wave, whether it's a, it's a sine wave, which is this one here, okay? Or it could be a triangle wave, you know, this is the same thing, it's the same. That's a cycle. That's that's when we talk about the frequency measurement or the time uh, in every um, oscilloscope. That's how it's called the time. Okay. There's also a sawtooth. This is a sawtooth waveform. Okay. And those are basically those are the four types of waveform. Okay. Now we go back to the square wave and the sine wave are the two ones that are used in automotive for automotive purposes. Okay. Now. Why is this important, for example? Well, if we're going to go into uh, fuel pumps, going back to the same deal, you know, we have, and not only fuel pumps, for example, this particular measurement is also good for, um, if we're going to go into the, uh, the CAN network, for example, that's another one, okay? Let's just, let me switch it into a sine wave because it sounds a little better. Okay, it's going to drive me crazy here. All right, so let's say we're going to go into a sine wave, okay? Uh, when we go into a sine wave, uh, it's going to be a square wave like this one, okay? And you're going to see something like this, okay? You're going to see something like this, all right? Now, you really have to know what you're doing in order to uh, be able to uh, uh, graph each packet on the uh, 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 information packet on the uh, on an oscilloscope. Okay. Now, let me turn off the you know the uh, the cursors. Uh, and so, uh, b- basically, what you have to do it's uh, let's say for example we're going to go into a, a ten cycle. Okay. This is what you would see for example in a CAN network. Not exactly like this, but more or less, you know, you're going to see something like this, and that's, that's how each one of these uh, uh, spikes is going to be like a one or a zero. That's how, that's how the, the vehicle communicates with the rest of the, uh, uh, of the network, you know. So uh, we could also do, let's see if it'll do it here, we could do a sweep, okay. And basically what it does is it, it, it increases the frequency from 0 to 440. See? Okay. Right, and we're going to go now and uh, we're going to switch. Let me see if it'll, I think it'll do it only on sine wave. Yeah, the sweep is only on sine wave. On sine wave. But it's the same deal, you know? It's pretty much the same deal. So uh, again, uh, and this uh, this is the one cycle. If we're going to talk, let's, let's talk about this for example. Where is the cycle here? Okay, where is the cycle here? The cycle is. I'm going to show you right now. This is the beginning of the cycle, right where the axes are, right here, to right around here. Okay, this is the zero line. Okay. This is a zero line here, okay? So from here to here, okay? That's a complete cycle, all right? F- dis- disregard the green one, because the green one is off, off short now. So anyhow, 
and that's pretty much you know all there is to you know when it comes to uh, when it comes to the, to, to ascertaining the uh, 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 the cycle, okay, of each. Uh, okay, so um, let me see. Hold on one second. All right. So again, uh, this is basically a one of the first. Vi I think this is the first video that we have done uh, that we explain the time and measurement uh, of each cycle. Okay, so uh, re in regardless of, how the, of the shape of the uh, signal, okay, you measure from the beginning of the cycle to the end of the cycle. Okay, this is the beginning again, the last time, and this is the end, and this is the the cutoff point right here and right here. Okay, and this is how you have to do your measurements. In this particular case, it's two points. 2.264 milliseconds and 441 hertz, uh, the fr the, which is right. That's the way you know that way it's supposed to be. Uh, anyhow, um, this is it for a frequency measurement. It's very simple, very easy, very straightforward. Uh, as we progress in this particular course on using oscilloscope, we're going to explain how to use this measurement better to diagnose specific issues. Okay, so we'd like to thank you for tuning in to our channel ADP Training uh, here on, uh, on YouTube. Uh, we also have our website auto autodiagnosticsandpublishing.com. Uh, you can do a search for automotive diagnostics and publishing. Uh, give us a uh, uh, post comment as much as you can. It is important that you comment. Otherwise, I'm not going to see a reason to do uh, to do this this uh, series anymore. Uh, so, if you can post comments as much as possible, uh, ask questions, uh, try and participate. Okay. We also have on our um, on our channel. You can uh, actually sponsor our channel, like uh, for a few bucks a month, which is really helps out because we try to keep this channel free. Okay. So I appreciate it. All the comments, uh, thumbs up if you like the channel. If you don't like it, then thumbs down too, because that that means that you're watching and you're participating. You don't have to like it, you know. Anyhow, uh, thank you for tuning in and thank you for watching. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another video. Today we are going to do a video on analyzing the cam and crank sensor signal. So we're going to do an analysis of these uh, waveforms. Now on uh, on screen, as you can see, this is a typical uh, cam and crank signal taken from my library. Now uh, this particular signal was um, this is, this is I forgot I really don't know which which card this belongs to, but this is uh, it's a good signal. Uh, now, I want you to pay attention to the correlation between cam and crank, and I'm going to show you a few. This is an older vehicle, that, that much I know. Uh, so, as you can see, uh, and this is a similar vehicle, uh, the bottom uh, waveform is the, the cam sensor, and the upper waveform is the crank sensor. We're going to do, we actually recorded a, uh, a complete uh, 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 waveform analysis, uh, actually a waveform on the scope, and we're going to play that for you towards, uh, uh, in, in, a, in a little bit, towards the, uh, in the middle of the, of, of, the, uh, uh, of the video. Okay, so again, this is the relationship between cam and crank. The upper one is the crank, the lower, the lower one is the, uh, the cam sensor. Now, <coughs> on the next uh, shot that we have, we're going to show you how to use these two uh, uh, signals to know or to correlate them uh, and to know whether you have a uh, a jumped timing belt or a stretched timing belt timing chain and so on and so forth now as you can see on screen we're going to use the uh, original uh, you know the software that we've al always been using uh, now pay attention to these two pulses at the bottom this this is this is the cam understand one thing for every revolution of the cam, uh, for it's half a revolution of the crank. So the crank turns twice, okay, for per every uh, cam revolution. So the cam turns twice, the crank turns once, okay. And this is important, okay, because if you have a jumped or a stretched timing belt, you're gonna know right away, and I'll, I'll show you how. Uh, uh, 
later on in the video. Now, as you can see, the top signal belongs to a uh, crank sensor, uh, and, and it's always like that. It's always, uh, you know, you're going to have a bunch of pulses on the crank signal and a few pulses on the cam signal uh, because this, the cam signal, all it wants to do is tell the ECM uh, number one top dead center from uh, from number one top dead center. Now, this is, this is, I mean, this is why I, I actually show, I'm showing you this. These two pulses of the cam represents a complete crank revolution, okay? And this is important uh, because of, of the fact that you have to know how many pulses you're going to get of the crank per cam uh, pulse, okay? And that's going to determine uh, for many reasons. Uh, and in between the cursors here that you see, uh, this is a complete, uh, again, a complete crank shaft revolution. Okay, now, uh, if the timing chain or the timing belt is stretched, and this is the purpose really of this, uh, of this video, uh, to allow you to uh, determine if you have a stretched timing belt or timing chain without doing major disassembly by just looking at the cam and crank. Now, uh, you, you don't know that right now, but I want to show you how uh, in a little bit. Uh, but anyhow, let, let me just uh, uh, explain to you the relationship of, of cam and crank. Now, this is one pulse uh, on screen. Per every per, per pulse, you're going to see a couple of pulses on, on the crank. Now, remember that the crank sensor has a reluctor wheel uh, with a bunch of little teeth. Uh, this is called the reluctor. These the t little teeth are, are, are called as again. This reluctor has a correlation. You're supposed to have X amount, and, and I'm, I can't tell you how many because it depends on the year, make a model, uh, uh, and the engine size of whatever you're, you're fixing, you're, you're diagnosing. It doesn't really matter. You have to have yourself uh, a, uh, a signal, uh, a good signal library. This is a must, okay? Uh, if not, you look it up online. Now, these days, uh, 20 years ago when I started doing this, you know, there was nothing uh, online. Uh, even Google wasn't that <laughs> that great back then. <coughs> so again, we're looking at half a crank um, uh, revolution, uh, one cam revolution, and we just changed it. Now, you so you what you do is you count the number two things that you're supposed to do: either count the number of cycles uh, that you see on the crank, okay, or the numbers of cycles that you see on the cam, in between the cam poles. Okay, and w again, I want to show you later on. I have actually have two uh, uh, shots that I did, uh, and I'm actually going to show you how to do that. As you can see on screen, uh, what, what you're looking at is a, a snapshot, a screenshot of the uh, cam and crank uh, correlation. And right now, I'm counting five uh, crank pulses per cam pulse. This is one. This is one way to do it. Okay. Now this is. Supposed to be, not supposed to be, this is a recorded uh, waveform from a good known cam and crank. This is a running engine. Uh, there was nothing wrong with it, okay? And I think, I believe, this is an older vehicle too. Uh, when I say older, uh, early 2000s, you know. Uh, again, now next, uh, we're going to see this. This is a, now you have two uh, crank um, pulses or cycles, you know per cam pulse, okay? This uh, shows, uh, and this is this was a really, really, really awful running car. And this shows a stretched timing chain. This was actually, I think it was a Nissan, if I remember correctly. This is a definitely a stretched timing chain. Sure enough, we pulled that out and it was a disaster. Even the tensioner was, uh, all the guys were, were worn out, horrible. Uh, so, and this is, so this is an easy way to do it. Again, uh, you can also count the number of pulses like we showed you before. Uh, you, what you do is you go between, you go two crank, two cam revolutions, okay? And then you count the number of pulses on the crank, okay? And that also tells you, but then you, you have to have a good known waveform. Once you, you get used to, uh, um, you know, doing this stuff, you're going to be, uh, you're, you're going to know more or less. You can also look at the, um, crank uh, 
uh, reluctor, and right away you count the number of, of, of teeth you know, on the reluctor, and right away you know because these uh, pulses on the crank sensor are, this is the exact number of teeth that, that you have on the, on the crank, okay? Now, it, it, it's a little bit of work, but it's a lot, it's a lot easier, it's a lot better than doing the disassembly and, and tearing down the engine uh, just to find out that there's nothing wrong with the cam and y your issue is something else, okay? So again, this is uh, another one of those uh, things that you can do with the oscilloscope and which saves a lot of time, okay? And that way you'll be able to uh, um, be definitely do a lot with your diagnostics that way. Uh, so uh, anyhow, this is uh, has been uh, this is the series that we're, we're running now. It's a cam uh, oscilloscope. Um, right now we're doing the cam and crank correlation uh, signal analysis, but this is uh, an oscilloscope uh, series that we're doing. Uh, again, uh, on screen you, you you know we show you exactly what you, we show you before uh, uh, the correlation, how to tell uh, tell whether you have a stretch timing chain. We'd like to thank you for tuning into our videos on our channel ADP Training. Uh, do a search on Google for automotive diagnostics and publishing. Subscribe to our website. We're always putting out free stuff. Okay, and uh, again, tomorrow we're, we're we're doing another another campaign, and we're I think we're giving out a, a free software. Okay, so thank you for tuning into our to our channel, and thank you for watching. This channel is for doing it. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another video. In today's video, we are going to t uh, talk about uh, glitch capture of the cam and crank sensor signal using the oscilloscope. And as you can see on screen, this is a three wire, the, the Hall effect sensor, uh, which are 98% of crank sensor or Hall effect sensor, produces a square wave, as you can see on screen. Maximum of five volts, normally 95%, 98% of the time, and ground, okay? And as you can see, this reluctor, the, the wheel the, that you see that, uh, that says reluctor, that's the, that is the crank. Uh, um, a wheel or it could also be a wheel speed sensor on very few cases or the cam sensor uh, it's just a tooth wheel that actually introduces the signal uh, you do uh, you're supposed to do tests and we're going to show you how to do these tests at the end of the video uh, uh, one side of the sensor usually is connected to either 12 volts or, or 5 volts the other side is connected to ground and then there's the signal voltage, the one that you see in the middle. Uh, it is the, the job of this sensor to toggle this signal voltage between ground and five volts. They're usually 95% of the time or more five volts, okay? And as you can see on screen, that was the, uh, uh, and we're gonna show you how to test, uh, uh, you know, the signal uh, using the, the scope uh, next. Uh, but anyhow, uh, it's very, it's a very, it's, it's a very straightforward sensor, okay? Um, it has an internal transistor, uh, and it, the, the transistor is the one that toggles the, the five volt at the signal line between five volt and ground. And next, we're gonna see uh, exactly what it looks like on the oscilloscope. Now, as you can see on the scope, we have other videos uh, uh, on this channel that actually deal with using this particular scope, okay? Uh, the scope itself, it's, uh, we actually offer the scope, uh, all, you ha all you have to do is send us an email and ask us for the scope. Anyhow, so this is the, the signal that you saw before, uh, briefly on the uh, introduction of the video. It is a square wave signal, okay, and we're going to touch upon, uh, upon two uh, aspects of this signal. And at the end, uh, towards the end of the video, we're going to show you how to actually do ma the manual testing that you're going to have to see. Now, we're gonna use the cursors, as you can see on screen. Uh, these cursors, the bottom one is a zero volt, okay? The upper, which is the yellow one. The blue one on the top is the maximum, which is a five volt, okay? That's what these two lines are gonna signify, ground and five volts, okay? And keep that in mind, okay? We're gonna mess around with the signal a little bit. Uh, this is a simulated signal, but it is an actual signal produced uh, by a, a, a signal simulator. Uh, anyhow, uh, so we are showing you right now uh, about one, two, three and a half uh, cycles of the waveform, okay? Uh, these cycles are, of course, depending on the speed of the engine or the speed of the wheel speed uh, uh, si signal, how fast the wheels are turning, or the cam sensor. 
Uh, so this this this, seg this this sensor is a triple or, or even more so you know it, it's actually used on a, on a bunch of it's also used inside the transmission as an input speed sensor uh, output speed sensor vehicle speed sensor and so on and so forth anyhow so going back to the signal itself uh, the first thing that we have to we're going to do now is we're going to expand the signal a little bit as you can see on screen and we're going to show you uh, this is about two cycles okay and we're going to move the z the, uh, the, the, uh, the trigger line, okay, so that it actually it, it shows better on screen, pretty much. Okay, so anyhow, uh, right now, uh, the bottom line is the zero volt line, as we explained before. The upper one is the maximum, which is usually five volts, okay? Uh, all you got to do is go to your uh, uh, sensor itself, and you're going to know if it's a five volt reference or not. 95% of the time, it's going to be five volt reference. Now, this, the what you can as you can see on screen, this is an issue that you that I want you to learn how to test. Okay, the upper part of the uh, of the wave not reaching five volts. Okay, not reaching five volts. There is a little gap in there. Okay, this gap cannot be more than 150 milli uh, millivolts or so. Okay, and if it's more than 200 millivolts, is too much. 0.2 volts it's just too much it starts creating problems okay so try and stay whenever you talk about signals within a hundred millivolt that's a rule of thumb okay now again uh, you want to see uh, in this particular case we're simulating an issue with this signal this is exactly what happens what could possibly be the problem here could it be the sensor could it be could it be the wiring uh, by analyzing this signal uh, there's a 90%, 85% percent chance that there is a, an issue with the wire, okay? Because it's not reaching 5 volts. It could also be the sensor, but 9 times out of 10, it's not, okay? Uh, again, you know, it's, uh, you, all you got to do is do your testing, okay? If you, if you go to the sensor, you disconnect the sensor, you measure the 5 volts in there, and it's, and it's not 5 volts, and you know uh, it's the wire without a shadow of a doubt, okay? Now... Uh, we are actually now going to show you, uh, we're going to do that next. Uh, if this signal, as, as I explained before, if it's a huge gap, as you see right now, forget it. It's, the ECM is never going to recognize that signal it, because the signal is not able to ground. It's not able to uh, toggle. Uh, there's something wrong with the wires, okay, nine times out of ten, okay, because you're seeing it on the waveform. You know that the sensor is switching, so there is nothing wrong with the sensor itself in that respect. So it is, it is triggering the base of the transistor inside the sensor. These sensors have an internal transistor. Okay. Now, uh, the other issue, and we're going to explain that next, is the ground, the ground side. Uh, but anyhow, so again, try to say, you know, make sure that the gap between the, 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 the upper side and, and the, on the upper part of the waveform is not too great. Now, for the ground. As you can see on screen, uh, this has to be 100% on the money. There is no 100 millivolts in there. You cannot forget it. You know, it, it has to be grounded properly. Okay, maybe 10 or 20 millivolts is fine, uh, but for signals, every, everybody has to be grounded. Every, everybody has to be on the same. You know, it's, it's not like Republicans and Democrats. No, this is not like that. This is ground. The ground, everybody has to be one or the other, but everybody has to be the same. Anyhow, so... Uh, going back to the uh, to, to the ground side, as you can see, there is also a gap here. We're simulating a gap, okay, between the ground and the lower part of the of the uh, of the signal, okay. Of the cr uh, this is a square wave signal, okay. In this particular case, this thing has to be right on the money. We're going to expand in a little bit. We're going to expand the signal, um, uh, the amplitude, so that as we that we can explain to you a little bit better, you know, how this. Uh, what you have to look for but right away as soon as you see this okay there's something wrong and there's something wrong with the ground not necessarily the signal itself this sensor is not able to ground the signal 100 percent why because the ground wire and you have to test your ground wires that we're going to explain uh, next after uh, you know towards as I when we finish the explanation of the waveform uh, anyhow so uh, as you can see here uh, this is not right. There's something wrong with this, okay? And you have to uh, basically, f this is a wiring problem. You have to find out 
what's going on. Uh, now we're expanding the signal so that we could actually do a better explanation uh, of what's going on here, okay? And basically what we're going to do is we're going to move, move the ground, uh, I mean the zero line a little bit further up so that we can actually test, show you what it means, you know? Uh, uh, again, as you can see, now the gap is even greater. Not because n because of anything in particular. You, we change uh, we change the amplitude, okay, and then we and we change we move the signal upwards so that we can show you that gap between ground, which is the yellow line, and the bottom part of the of the waveform, okay. As I said, this cannot be if it's uh, if it's 20 millivolts, it's it's already starting to be a problem, okay. Uh, and again, you have to do a voltage drop test uh, between uh, battery and, and the actual ground. I know you're measuring between ground and ground. That, that tells you right away. If you have voltage between ground and ground, you have an issue. You found your problem already. Then you have to tackle the problem. Either run a new wire or, or find the issue itself. If you've, if you've seen that, the, you know, usually you, uh, the ECM has a bunch of ground lines going to it, okay? Uh, sometimes as, as many as eight, uh, even ten ground lines. Okay, I have customers who, who call me and, uh, and they tell me, no, we, you know, we're seeing twelve and fourteen ground lines on some computers. Uh, that's incredible, but that's just the way it is. Uh, so anyhow, one of these uh, lost grounds, it's a problem. Okay, so you have to do a voltage drop test between ground and ground, between battery ground and whatever ground you're testing. It should be zero. Okay, if it's 20 millivolts, which is 0 0.020, okay, that's, uh, that's the beginning of, of, of a problem, okay? Uh, anyhow, so going back to this thing here, uh, you know, this is an issue, okay? You have to test it, test the wires, uh, make sure that everybody's on the same plane. Uh, you may want to check all your uh, ECM grounds, even if that takes a long time, but that's just the way it is, you know, you, th this is, th that's why it's called diagnostics. And you should be charging, you know, some parts of the country are charging $150 per diagnostic, some are 120 is the norm. Uh, if it's a, like the, uh, you know, if, uh, I'm gonna say a poorer state, you know, then you charge at least $85, you know, because you're gonna spend time doing this, this thing and you should be uh, compensated for it. Uh, so anyhow, so this it's the most important part of this video. You have to look look at this video and put it inside your head. This is a no-no, the big gap. Now we're going to see on screen uh, the actual tests uh, that we can that we're actually uh, and this is the Hall effect sensor again. It's a five volt reference. This particular one, some sometimes it's twelve volts. You know, sometimes it's not. Okay, uh, signal and ground. Okay, and the ECM side, you could see it. Uh, now, this is a, a test of the ground wire. This is a voltage drop test of the ground wire. You should see zero, okay? Uh, maybe 0 0.1, okay? 0 0.01, not even 0 0.1. And this, another one, this is a voltage drop test between the ground on the sensor itself and the battery ground. Again, you should see zero. And that's pretty much it, you know, as far as the... Uh, uh, I uh, know all these tests. Now we'd like to uh, uh, thank you for tuning in to our channel ADP Training. Uh, uh, subscribe to our website. We have a bunch of free stuff all the time. Okay, so make sure that you do uh, um, you subscribe to our website. If, if you think that that whatever we produce it's uh, of use uh, to uh, of useful to you to you guys. Okay, it's automotive diagnostics and publishing dot com. Auto diagnostics and publishing dot com. Uh, on our channel here. Uh, uh, you can actually request, not on the channel, because I cannot do uh, send you a, uh, a link through the channel itself, uh, but you can actually do it um, through, the, uh, uh, through, through the website or through email, sales uh, at autodiagnosticsandpublishing.com. You can request a free copy of this oscilloscope that runs on your sound card on your computer, okay? Uh, but anyhow, so uh, and uh, again, uh, our channel ADP Training. If you like to uh, uh, um, sponsor us, you know, or, or be a patron, you know, give us uh, 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 any donations. Uh, we appreciate it. Okay, uh, we we can do. You know, this is a free channel, but it costs money to do all this stuff. Anyhow, thank you for tuning in and thank you for watching, everybody, and welcome to another video. In today's video, we are going to study the primary and secondary signal analysis 
using the 8 channel oscilloscope. Now, on screen, as you can see, we have a, this is the bottom side of an ignition pulse, okay? Now, why do we need that? Uh, why is that important? Because the bottom side, and this is, this is the side of the, uh, of this video that we want to uh, stress. The fact that uh, by studying this particular point, we can actually ascertain whether the ECM is grounded properly. So the ECM or the ignition module, okay? But today's engines, most of them are, uh, the, the, the ECM is the one that actually um, triggers the ignition coil. Now, let's stop for a second and let's analyze this particular signal. We're gonna go into our, our, the other signals uh, different screenshots here in this video as well as a uh, uh, the actual software that uh, for the scope anyhow uh, the blue arrow that you see on screen uh, that's the uh, ECM ground line as it pertains to the ignition coil okay now uh, and this also by the way applies to injectors or or and or solenoids okay now, point A and point B uh, on screen. Uh, so these two points, uh, the beginning and the and the end of the uh, pulse, okay, uh, of, remember, the ECM is grounding the ignition coil for uh, whatever amount of milliseconds um, it is. You know, in this particular case, uh, if you count the lines, uh, I don't know, something like... Uh, uh, let me see, 500, um, probably around four, like three or four uh, milliseconds, okay? Now, this is fairly normal. Uh, the issue, the, 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 what we want to concentrate is point A and point B. This is the delta, or delta means difference, uh, between the actual uh, pulse ground and the real ground, which is the red line on the bottom. Okay, that's the real ground. That's uh, that's the ground provided by the by the battery. Okay, so um, uh, so that's that. So you what what you have to do as a uh, technician, um, whether you're working in your own car or you're some somebody else's car, it's uh, analyze the beginning and the and the end. The deviation cannot be too wide. As a rule of thumb, anything above a hundred milliseconds. Uh, I'm sorry, 100 millivolts, okay? It's considered a faulty ground, okay? Uh, especially now that you're stressing, because you are stressing the ground since you are pulsing the ignition module. Okay, on this next um, screen now, we are actually showing you a screenshot of the actual ignition uh, software, there, the, the, the eight-channel software. That, uh, that we're going to present you with. Now, uh, right now, uh, it's the same deal, okay? However, as you can see, uh, the upper signal is a primary and the lower signal is a secondary, okay? Now, uh, it's important because what, what you want to ascertain is the exact, this is the exact same spot as before. Okay, the other signal, but this is actually we're showing you the entire cycle here, the the, the entire uh, measurement of the pulse. Okay, uh, how the ECM grounds the ignition coil, and then the spark, uh, which is the the side towards the end. Uh, so anyhow, we have other videos that actually uh, show you how to interpret the entire ignition spark waveform. But anyhow, but we want to concentrate on this particular area, which is the ground. Now, as you can see, the secondary, it's very hard to distinguish a ground issue. Uh, it's more seen, and the, by the way, this is normal. Uh, this, this particular signal is a normal signal. So it's a good coil, in other words. But you can actually see issues with the uh, primary first, okay, uh, rather than, than studying the secondary. And then again, this is a much more uh, uh, analyzed uh, ignition uh, signal. Uh, again, primary on the top, secondary on the bottom, okay? Uh, 
this particular section that you see there it says ignition coil turn on this is the on time okay this is the on time for the ignition coil and then in light green it's the end and this uh, uh, the start and the end of the spark event okay uh, and this basically you can't really tell much from the spark uh, as far as the, the whether the ground is good or not you, you, you're not going to see a, a big spark in there this that line will be totally skewed um, if you had a ground issue because the if if you can ground the coil properly um, so basically you know you are that you're not going to have a good spark uh, and that's that's pretty much it you know uh, so again uh, now going back to the uh, uh, this is the actual uh, let's see let's plot the the primary so this is the actual ignition uh, the oscilloscope software this is in real time okay we're not graphing the bottom two signals are just the two channels hanging uh, because we uh, basically are not connected to a car uh, for sake of explanation and, and doing the, the signal analysis, we're better off concentrating on the upper two sample signals uh, that you see here. And this is the, the, the exact same thing. Uh, let me just get rid of the uh, sure, all off. Let me get rid of the, of the two channels. The two action channels one and two. And let's just concentrate on the sample signals. Uh, let's pull up a little bit of... Um, on the cursors over here okay this is good all right so again this side here okay that's ignition coil turn on all right and this is the exact again primary and secondary primary in blue secondary in yellow uh it's the secondary is a reflection of the primary okay so but it's useful to study both sometimes because you cannot tell much uh on the secondary as far as ground issues okay this difference that we showed you before uh is going to be reflected uh on the primary uh, much much better than 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 on the uh, secondary so uh so again that's uh ignition turn on okay this this right here this is the the part of the cycle that's ignition turn on this is the ignition coil or the ecm grounding the coil and this is the actual spike okay it's important let me just do a little bit better so that you're gonna it's important that you understand that because this is what's going to give you the spark this is what's going to give you the quality of the spark and of course there's a bunch of other uh, things in here like the spark gap the, i mean the spark line which is this one here blah 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 but we have other videos that study that we're not going to go too deep into that stuff and also these uh, undulations here at the end uh, as you can see on the primary you can see undulations here okay and then undulations here all right Th that's important okay to determine the general health of the ignition coil okay and today's coils are you know you have the coil plug you have to replace I don't know six eight or maybe 12 coils if you have a 12 cylinders if the mercedes is for example a lot of the europeans have two coils per cylinder so we're talking about a lot of money you know thousand fifteen hundred dollars just to replace all the coils for nothing just by studying this you can determine if the general health of the coil is good or bad okay uh by studying all these undulations here which again we, we cover that in another video look it up on our channel adp training so again, uh, what we wanted to expose you, you guys, it's in, the, in this particular video, uh, it's on this particular side of the equation, okay? Okay, especially the line, the difference between the ground, the real ground, okay, and the and the and the signal ground. You cannot have deviations in there, no more than a hundred millivolts as a rule of thumb, okay? you that's a lot actually you know so you you want to look for something under that way under that okay but sometimes you, you could still have a good spark even if you have a little bit of resistance on the ground anyhow so this was a very um a technical video uh explaining you guys how to determine if you have a good ecm ground just by studying you don't have to disassemble anything just by studying the signal for the uh, 
primary and secondary. And again, the primary is the one that's going to tell you uh, whether you have an issue uh, with the ground or not. The secondary is too hard to tell, you know. Uh, but by, by by going into the ignition uh, spark plug itself or the ignition wires or whatever, you know. So anyhow, uh, we like to thank you for tuning into our channel ADP Training, where we expose you to very uh, sometimes complicated, sometimes not uh, um, automotive diagnostic issues uh, that you actually have to contend with if you are working on your own vehicle or if you are uh, a uh, automotive repair shop technician. This stuff is not really meant for mechanics. Uh, they're meant more for automotive technicians, high-level technicians that actually deal with this stuff. Uh, so if you want to become a high-level tech, uh, see our videos here. We, uh, we have a website, autodiagnosticsandpublishing.com, where we have published over 50 publications. They're all seen through Amazon. You can buy them through Amazon. Uh, you can buy them through our website in an uh, ebook format. Uh, so, uh, and if you subscribe to our website, you get free stuff. Sometimes these books, we, get, we give them out uh, like chapters, whole chapters for free. Uh, so we appreciate you tuning into our channel, ADP Training, and thank you for watching. Hi, and welcome to another video. In today's video, we are going to talk about the ignition primary and crankshaft sensor correlation. Uh, and as you can see on screen, um, we're showing you uh, the eight-channel oscilloscope that we carry on our website, and these two waveforms that you see are sample waveforms that are provided uh, by the uh, the software, the uh, oscilloscope software uh, that we have. But before we go into the rest of the video, we're going to show you a few sample waveforms so that you get an idea uh, of the correlation between uh, cam and crank and um, a few uh, a few other um, uh, waveforms that we have. Uh, uh, correlating the ignition and the crank sensor uh, uh, signal. Uh, so let's take a look. Okay, back to the video. So, now, uh, we use the, uh, the sample waveforms that are embedded in, in, the, in the video to do the classes because it's already made. It's, you know, everything is there for us, you know. Now, as you can see on screen, uh, we have the upper waveform is the crank sensor signal, and the, which is the blue one, and the yellow one is the ignition. As you, if you've ever seen an ignition signal, that's what they look like. So anyhow, there is a correlation, and you can tell a lot, uh, especially timing chain problems, uh, by looking at the ignition and current sensor signals. Also, they can, but we're gonna, we have another video that explains that. Okay, but assuming that the cam and crank are in sync, so that the timing belt is not jumped. Uh, we basically we have to um, uh, grab the crank and the ignition. Those two signals are good enough for you to know if you have an issue with a jump timing belt or timing chain. And this is this is the value of this particular explanation of this video. Uh, this is where it comes. <coughs> now. Uh, by correlating the crank sensor, this is, as you can see on screen, this is number one, cylinder number one, TDC, top dead center, okay? Uh, before top dead center, as you can see it, and let's, why don't we plot, let's plot a couple of cursors in there so that we have a better idea. Okay, so this is top dead center, okay? This is right there. It, actually, this is top dead center, you know, this little thing here that you see the little Wiggly, um, and this is a on the reluctor of the crank sensor. You have a uh, the tooth has an extra gap, and this is where you see that. 
Uh, if you've ever worked on um, um, automobiles, you would you probably know a lot of technicians don't really know how to use the scope. So this is the, the, the value of, of these videos. Uh, this is a series that we're doing on using the oscilloscope. Now, this is the actual event, the ignition event. Okay, we're not going to go into the analysis of the ignition sin signal. We have another um, a video that goes into that. Okay, so as you can see, why do we have this? So this is the actual spark. And by the way, you can see it here because we're going to see the, uh, in the next signal. This is the the coil on, and this is the spark. Okay, now. So let's concentrate on the spark. As we can see here, we have a spark. And this graph, and it's just, okay, this is the spark itself. But it happens, it doesn't coincide with number one TDC. Of course, this is a spark for cylinder number one TDC. It doesn't have to be cylinder number one, it could be cylinder number five or number six or number seven. Uh, not all the engines are correlating to cylinder number one, but most of them do. Okay, so let's assume that this one does. Uh, because this is 90% uh, of, of automobiles do, uh, they're correlating to serial number one, TDC. <coughs> now, uh, so this ignition event happens a few degrees before top dead center. This is normal, okay? And this is what you have to expect uh, from almost any engine because you, you, you want the ignition uh, to happen right before top dead center, before full compression, okay? And then, uh, when that happens, you get an even burn, okay? This particular waveform may happen a little bit before that, but that maybe a, another notch before, like over here, right? Uh, it could happen over there, or in this particular case, it happens right there, right before top of the center, maybe two uh, notches before top of the center, okay? Whatever amount of degrees that correlates to. So only two teeth before top of the center, of the crank. It has to be that way because it, the ignition has to happen before top dead center so that you could, you could get an even combustion. Okay? Uh, now, of course, the uh, ECM is going to move this crank signal uh, before or even after a little bit, depending on the load, whether you're going uphill or you're towing a car, you're accelerating or what have you. Okay? But basically, this is uh, this is the correlation, you know, that you should get. Okay. Uh, now, uh, by studying the ignition and the number one TDC, right away you're going to know if you have a jump timing belt. If this particular signal happens over here, okay, this is way too much. Or if it happens over here, way too much. Without you even checking compression or anything remotely, uh, you don't have to do just by plotting, um, uh, tapping into, into the uh, ignition, uh, primary or secondary, and to the crank sensor signal wire, you would know right away if you have a jump timing belt or timing chain, okay? Uh, that's the value of this particular test, okay? Again, if it happens here, way too before top of the center, or here, way after top of the center, this is too much. As you can see, this so again, uh, you're, you're checking a car uh, at idle. So at idle, uh, no load. This is what you have to see. Okay. If you have an issue with the timing belt jump, you're not going to see uh, the ignition event. Okay. This one here, you're not going to see it. Uh, uh, at the right spot. So it's got to be between here, actually something like, like this. Let me just give you an idea. Something like this. That's a good uh, range where this particular signal could move back and forth, okay? Uh, depending on the load, uh, but usually you're going to get it at idle, you're going to get this. Before top the center, a few degrees before top the center, you're going to get the spike, okay? And then that way, it uh, it calls for even combustion of the uh, of the of the of the burn. Uh, so again, uh, the value of this particular uh, test is that you can tell right away if you have a if you have a jump timing belt. Uh, the other possibility is you have to do this assembly, major disassembly, 
just to, you know, rather than just to see it, okay? And it may not be the time of chain or the time of bell, it could be something else, but just by studying, okay? Two signals, ignition and crash sensor. That's all you need, okay? That's, that's it. So again, uh, it's, a, uh, it's a simple test uh, just to go through it that tells you a lot without doing major disassembly, okay? So, and that's the idea. The faster you do your diagnostics, the faster, the more profitable your business is going to be. Or if you're working your, on your own car, uh, the better off you're going to be because you're going to go 100% for sure, okay? That you have a jump belt or not. And you can then start this assembly and you can definitely call your customer. Uh, or if it's your own car, you can definitely do, you do the work. You know that the, the time belt has jumped, okay? Uh, and basically, so that's, uh, that's the value of this particular. It, it is very, uh, 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 it's very straightforward and very fast, you know. Now, um, and, and of course, you know, it's, it, it always helps if you have a, a waveform database, which you, you can. But we have a waveform database on our website, autodiagnostics and publishing.com, that you can purchase. It's very inexpensive, it's like under $100, and you can buy. We have. Uh, a uh, couple hundred uh, signals in there that you can draw from. You know, if you can fix a car uh, with a database, uh, then it's worth the money, okay? Again, we'd like to thank you for tuning into our channel, ADP Training, uh, where we expose you to everything, anything that's uh, related to automotive diagnostics, okay? Uh, and uh, we really appreciate it if you give us a donation um, on the description. Uh, there is a uh, link to uh, PayPal, or you can actually do donate right through uh, YouTube, you know. Uh, there's a little dollar sign right below the screen, or you could become a paid member uh, for a couple of bucks, you know, five bucks, uh, ten bucks, you know, uh, a month. And uh, it really helps us out because, you know, this stuff is uh, very expensive to produce, okay? So we appreciate you for tuning, tuning into our channel, and thank you for watching. Hi and welcome to another video. In today's video, we are going to talk about the uh, ignition um, waveform uh, voltage and current analysis. Uh, so on screen here, as uh, you can see, we are going to go into the uh, our eight-channel oscilloscope that we carry on our website, and we're going to go into um, ignition uh, primary uh, voltage and current. And as you can see on screen, it uh, the scope sets itself up. We're not going to go. Uh, we're not hooked up to a car, but we are getting the following. These two signals are sample signal signals that the scope um, uh, presents you with. They, it has a database in, internally uh, of the software, you know, for the scope that you whereby you can actually uh, you can view all these sample signals. Now, uh, before we go into the uh, sample signal analysis, and this is what this video is about, it's about analyzing signals, okay? Interpreting signals once you have the scope. Uh, we're gonna go into the following, um, uh, into the following um, uh, signals uh, that we have from our uh, waveform database uh, software that we carry or also on our website, autodiagnosticsandpublishing.com. Um, and on the uh, on the scope itself, as you can see, um, we this particular signal that we see on screen right now, uh, it's a uh, voltage and current signal. Okay, uh, they're in, superimposed on top of the other. Okay, uh, this is the same signal that we we expanded it a little bit. You know, uh, so we expanded the time base a little bit so that you can view a little bit better. Okay, this is a normal signal. Okay. Uh, again, this is a normal signal for the coil. Okay, we have another video that shows you how to um, how to get these uh, these signals. Okay, and you you need a current uh, clamp on Empro. Now, uh, on cylinder number two here, this is what happens to the spike when you have a faulty ignition system, whether it's a coil ignition, uh, um, you name it. Uh, it doesn't really matter. Uh, this is another um, ignition waveform. Uh, that basically you're losing the whole spark okay we have another video that the de deal deals with this okay uh, and this is yet another one okay where you see the the actual um, 
the number four here it's gone pretty much okay uh so still on number four you're gonna you're gonna have a misfire okay so this video actually helps you also helps you detect uh misfire problems which which are very very common okay and finally we're going to show you a um, a uh, waveform that details a, a shorted ignition coil okay and how it relates uh to the how it, it actually reflects on the spark itself okay so uh basically that was it uh this is it for for the sample uh, for waveforms that we have from our library we're going to go back to the video now okay uh and the video itself it's uh as you can see on screen uh it actually shows you the um uh, uh, the upper one the blue one is the uh, ignition coil current waveform current okay uh, that means amperage and uh, the bottom one is the actual ignition voltage that you get with the uh with an ignition probe okay we can superimpose the signals if we want by moving this this thing around okay and as you can see this particular and let's just plot our cursors here let's just go into the the cross which is actually the best one for explanation now this point here is the is the ignition coil turn on okay by analyzing the the signal itself okay then you'll know okay if you have an issue uh with the coil or not uh, and you just saw the uh, waveform that we had before uh the one with the shorter coil uh if this is not we have another video that details this so look it up on our on our channel adp training here on youtube okay um so we have uh, we basically show you how, what a faulty uh, ignition current waveform uh, sh uh, looks like now uh well, this is video is actually show, it shows you both it shows you the ignition and the uh, ignition uh, current and voltage together and how it reflects when you have an issue with uh, with it with the blue one with this one here when you have an issue here is going to reflect on the uh, on this one here which is the voltage okay uh, the voltage uh, signal itself uh, now we've uh, explained this uh, different points, you know, uh, of, of the signal. We're going to go briefly through it again. Okay, over here, the superimpose it again. Okay, so this is one second here. This is uh, ignition coil turn on. Okay, this is ignition coil. Let's see if we could snap it a little easier here. Ignition coil. This is the whole pulse for the coil, okay? The entire pulse, okay? This is the actual spark, okay? You only see that on the voltage, reflected on the voltage. That's a spark, okay? So let's re separate these guys now so that you can see it. So this is the spark. Actually, this, this side here is the spark, okay? Down here, okay? That's a spark, okay? that is the one that suffers when you have issues over here now this is reflected in the current and actually it happens in the current and is reflected right here because this is a turn off point okay actually i'm going to go both of them okay this is the turn off point right here the turn off point is actually is this uh, the, uh, vertical going uh, line on the on the signal that that's a turn off point and by the way this is the same it happens the same way whether you're testing it an injector or a solenoid uh but we're just concentrating on the spark also because this you're not going to get this on a solid this is a spark it's a high voltage spark okay so on the spark itself we have another video that deals with examining the spark this is the spark uh, spark uh, uh, it's 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 a um uh, it's a spike that you get on the spark okay and this tells you a lot okay so all, all this stuff has to be analyzed okay for the spark line uh for this for the spark waveform so this is the, the entire the entire okay from here to here let's go ahead let's do it again okay this is the the, the actual um pulse width okay pulse width we're gonna go go at it 
see the whole deal okay so this is a whole pulse width coming from the ignition module or the ecm because now ecm is the one that that turns on the coils on many cars okay and this back here is the actual spark okay this over here the spark itself okay and uh basically what happens is that whatever again we're going to repeat ourselves whatever happens here you're going to see a reflected right here okay and we are going to show you again the bunch of uh uh, waveform that we this is by the way extracted from our uh, waveform database software that we have on our website autodiagnosticsandpublishing.com look it up where it says software on, on our on our, our main page uh, and so keep looking through all, all our software catalog in there that we have in there and you you can purchase it anywhere in the world and you're going to get it download once you purchase and it passes your credit card check uh, you're going to get a download uh, link within maybe sometimes depending on where you are in the world it could last as much as an hour or two okay sometimes 10 minutes sometimes one minute you know depends uh, where you are okay or how your bank is uh, connected anyhow and so uh, our waveform database uh, is loaded with a couple thousand waveforms in there and photographs and stuff like that which is well worth the money okay uh, again, so we'd like to thank you for tuning in to our channel, ADP Training, okay, where we expose you to all kinds of uh, automotive. This is a specialized channel for automotive diagnostics only. And uh, we do sometimes, we, we, we cover other stuff too, but it's very, very rare, okay? Uh, and so uh, anyhow, so we uh, uh, like to um, uh, uh, push you to our website, autodiagnosticsandpublishing.com, where we also give out subscribe to our website we give out free stuff all the time okay uh on our website we send you emails uh, once a month and we expose you give you like a free video or f uh, not a free video because videos are hard to to uh, send but a free software free free books if we have ebooks on our website which we, sometimes we give you free ebooks or sections of our ebooks you know when whatever is free anyway so i mean you know so subscribe to our website uh, if you're interested in this sort of thing whether it's for your own vehicle or you know anybody else anyhow or, or for you that you work on a, on a shop on a repair shop okay so we uh, like to thank you for tuning into our channel if we can uh we ex we're accepting donations we really appreciate it uh because we rely on your donations to continue our free channel here okay you can become a paid member here on youtube uh, for for five bucks a month or something like that uh, or you can become a uh, you can just donate once it's up to you or you can go to the description and donate through paypal okay we have the the, the link in there so that you can donate to us okay uh, so we appreciate you tuning into our channel adp training and thank you for watching hey, and welcome to another video in today's video we are going to uh, talk about the correlation between cam uh, crank ignition injection uh, chem and crank ignition and injection that's it <laughs> so here as you can see on our um, uh, this is our software um, oscilloscope eight channel oscilloscope uh, software um, that we actually we carry this on our website and so we're looking for the uh, the ignition ignition uh, chem and crank uh, injection and coil so uh, let's see if I could find it here Here you go. Well, let's let's turn off all the uh, the actual lines. So this is the this is actually the uh, injection, the cam, and the ignition. Okay. Uh, basically, what it is, and let, let's show this again. Let me do it again so that uh, it actually the scope sets itself up automatically. Um, and so that's what you're seeing right now. So you're seeing, uh, because it's not connected, uh, to a car, you, that this is what you see all the, all the hash that you're seeing right now. Uh, and so, um, what we're going to do, let's just turn off one of these channels. There you go. Uh, so basically we have, uh, we have the sample signals on the top. Okay. And let's turn this off because this is, there you go. 
So these are the sample signals that the uh, ignition, uh, for sake of uh, explaining the analysis of the waveforms, uh, this is this is these are the uh, signals uh, that uh, the scope software has uh, as a sample. They have sample signals. Uh, now, um, on screen, let's see if we could just plot the uh, the actual signals again. So on screen right now, this is what the the four signals look like. So on the top we have the uh, injector pulse. Okay, and we're going to show you um, in the next slide uh, exactly what all these points mean, so that you learn how to analyze the signal. So the the top upper one is the injection. The middle one is the cam. The third one, which is the wiggly line, that's the sine wave, is the crank, and the bottom one is the igni ignition, uh, this uh, primary ignition, okay? And all these points have a, um, all these uh, signals have a specific point of interest, and this is what we're going to see right now. That's it. Now, as you can see, um, on top, that's the injection on time. That's the, that's the actual, the ECM grounding the injector, okay? Uh, so basically that happens uh, right about a little bit before top dead center. If you can um, uh, look on the, the third uh, signal, it says crank number one TDC, top dead center. That's the exact top dead center point, and it correlates with the cam. Each cam and crank, as you probably know, has a different correlation, uh, but that's not the purpose of this video. The purpose of this video is to show you the correlation between all the three, the four signals, okay? Um, so as you can see, the top one is the injector turning on, uh, followed by the, by the cam, and the cam has a little notch in there, which is a little shorter notch, that signifies the cam, the, the cylinder on compression. Uh, for, for every two, um, you got to understand, for every uh, two revolution of the cam, the crank turns once. Okay, so you could have this, the, 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 the cylinder on TDC, on compression, or on exhaust. That's very important to understand. Uh, now, the crank sensor is the third signal. Uh, as you can see, that's the number one top dead center, uh, and that has to correlate with a little notch on the cam. That way the computer knows, the ECM knows that the cylinder is on compression, and on compression is when it's going to detonate, it's going to give you injection, and it's going to give you ignition. Now understand one thing, that this particular uh, injection here, that where it says the injector turn on time, uh, sometimes it happens way before or way after the TDC depending on the vehicle, okay? Some of the newer uh, Miller cycle engines, uh, they actually rely on that. So it actually triggers the injector later. Uh, so uh, it has to do with creating more swirl, uh, more mixing of the air fuel mixture and so on and so forth. So, and sometimes it's before, okay? Um, and of course, a lot of the um, um, engines now have direct injection, okay? And then the bottom signal is the actual spark, okay? Uh, of course, to the right of that, you see coil on. This is the coil turn on time, okay? This is the time that the ECM or the uh, ignition module grounds the coil. This is very important uh, because if you have this, this period here, if it's too short or too long, it's not gonna give you a proper spark. And then after the coil turn on, uh, going back to the to the other events, uh, um, coil event, ignition event, then you have the, the actual spark. Okay, we have other videos, by the way, that uh, teach you and train you on this particular series that we are putting up right now. Uh, they train you on how to read ignition uh, waveforms. Look them up on, on our, especially we have a playlist on our channel. Uh, so again, so this is the correlation. It's very important that you understand, you know, how this, uh, why is this important? 
Uh, for example, the spark time, the spark that you see there happens a little bit before TDC. Okay, this is because the combustion has to propagate uh, through the inside through the cylinder. Uh, and so it happens a few degrees before top dead center uh, for each cylinder. Okay. Uh, then, of course, you have the injection, which in this particular case correlates almost with TDC, but sometimes it's way before. Usually it's way before so that uh, the injector uh, basically uh, squirts some fuel uh, into the uh, uh, intake, ma intake manifold or... In this particular case, this looks like a uh, ignition direct injection. So it'll trigger the injection right at, right at compression, right at TDC compression, okay? Uh, and then uh, it's immediately, you know, even before that, it starts, as you can see, the ignition happens, okay? Uh, and then you have TDC. So this is because it, it needs a little bit of time for the uh, combustion, for the mixture to, uh, to, to swirl in the, inside the cylinder, uh, and then it, gets, uh, then it gets ignited, you know, and it takes time for all these things. That's why the injection usually in, on direct injection engines corresponds, you know, with a few degrees before top dead center, okay? Uh, so it's, it's just, and as you can see also the coil on time, uh, it's happening. Uh, this particular coil, the reason why you have a, a, another coil event uh, turn on is because you're also triggering um, uh, the next cycle, which is the one that you see here. And you also trigger on exhaust. You also trigger a spark on exhaust, believe it or not. And the reason for that is, is just for, for emission purposes, uh, to be able to... Uh, uh, so a lot of new engines don't have, even have an EGR valve. That's why, because they also trigger uh, an ignition uh, on exhaust just to burn the residue, the extra fuel. Uh, and, it, and it has a lot to do with, with you know, how uh, the ECM is the one that controls all that stuff. Because sometimes you do want, like for when the engine is cold, you want to create uh, a, a rich mixture to heat up the catalytic converter and, and all these things. So it, there's a lot behind the actual programming that the engine uh, has to um, employ uh, to be able to, uh, um, you know, to, to, to operate the engine properly. And so uh, basically we just, wanna sh uh, just wanted to show you a four signal analysis of uh, uh, injection, which is on the top, uh, cam, crank, and uh, ignition, which is on the bottom, okay? Um, and so that you understand how all this, this stuff relates to each other. And uh, uh, and the fact that uh, uh, some of this stuff has to happen a little bit before top dead center, you know? Uh, we actually uh, push you, we're um, um, advising you to check out our, uh, uh, the playlist that we have on uh, signal analysis, on oscilloscope signal analysis here on our channel, ADP Training. So we'd like to thank you for uh, tuning into our channel, ADP Training. Uh, go into our website, autodiagnosticsandpublishing.com. Subscribe so that you can get free stuff that we're always putting out. Uh, if you can uh, subscribe to our website and to our channel and uh, become a paid member here on YouTube, we really appreciate it. Uh, for a couple of bucks, you know, five bucks, ten bucks, you know, a, a month, you can pretty much become a paid member. Uh, and that way we can continue to give you this uh, uh, programming, you know, uh, it costs a lot of money to make this stuff. So uh, we really appreciate it. Uh, and thank you for tuning into our channel, ADP Training, and thank you for watching. Hello everybody and welcome to another video. In today's video we are going to study the ABS glitch capture using the oscilloscope uh, on an ABS signal. Uh, on screen uh, as you can see it's uh, our typical throughout the uh, this course we've been using this particular software uh, which is a uh, it's a free software that we offer that runs on your sound card. It is a, it is a real software but it also has a sig signal generator. Uh, the free software, um, uh, it's, uh, it's a light capture software, okay, which means that not high voltages, okay, <coughs> but ha however, having said that, it's a, it is a very capable software, 
two channels because that's all you have for, with your sound card. Any, anyhow, uh, send us an email and we'll we'll send you the the, the, the scope software. Uh, now on screen, uh, as you can see, uh, it's the uh, the actual software. Uh, we are going to uh, actually create an ABS signal, a magnetic ABS signal. 98% of all ABS uh, sensors are magnetic two wire sensors. Okay, we have another uh, video here that explains uh, to you exactly how a two-wire sensor works. Now, having said that, uh, pretty much uh, it's a, a, this is a, this is what you would see with a scope. Now, we are going to uh, turn the uh, in a little while. We're going to turn the uh, uh, the ABS uh, uh, signal on, uh, and we're going to explain to you how um, we're going to introduce a glitch. Uh, to that signal uh, towards the end of the video uh, uh, then we're going to explain to you how exactly how you know what you have to do or throughout the video pretty, probably you know uh <coughs> so anyhow this particular video uh this particular signal uh, uh it's a um, uh, this is what you would see and understand one thing that uh, the amplitude and this is the signal this is what it looks like this is a sine wave signal from the from uh, an actual ABS sensor and this is uh, the amplitude changes uh, as you increase the speed of the car okay of the vehicle uh, this is not only a wheel speed sensor signal on an ABS uh, this also uh, you can use the same techniques here uh, for input sp uh, speed sensors on the transmission, output speed sensor on the transmission, vehicle speed sensors. Uh, today, you get you're gonna get a wheel, uh, a vehicle speed signal from one of the wheel speed sensors, usually at the in the rear, rear right or rear left. Okay, uh, but this is exactly uh, this is a square wave that, that we just saw before. But this is exactly what you would see. Okay, a sine wave. Uh, <coughs> This sine wave is broadcasted through the CAN throughout the CAN network, and that's how the uh, the TCM uh, uh, actually assesses or, or or gets a a an idea for speed. Okay, uh, so the wheel speed sensor uh, is usually connected to the ABS computer because it's a uh, their wheel speed sensors. Okay, and then the ABS computer transfers that signal uh, uh, via the uh, or via, or however you want to say it, the uh, uh, the network, the CAN network, uh, to the uh, transmission computer. Okay. Now, <coughs> on screen here, as you can see, it's a uh, it's a typical. This is about two or three cycles of the uh, of the waveform. Okay. <coughs> now, uh, this particular signal, if you would get a glitch right now, you would never see it. Or you would see a, a haze or, or or a garble very briefly, you know, for a, a fraction of a second, and you would never see the, the issue uh, with this uh, particular signal. Okay, uh, we have done uh, right now maybe two, maybe two or three videos that actually explain to you how to compress, and that, that you just you just saw uh, you just saw a glitch. That's another glitch right there. Okay, and now. We, we've done a couple of videos that explain to you how to capture glitches, uh, but this one is how it would apply to an ABS uh, wheel speed sensor or vehicle speed sensor signal. Uh, they all look the same, regardless of the vehicle that you drive or the brand that you dr drive, uh, of the engine size, it doesn't really matter. If it's a two-wire signal, this is what it's going to look like, uh, and there's no other way uh, to capture it. Uh, or to capture the glitch uh, unless you do what we're about to show you uh, in this video okay <coughs> now on screen as you can see uh, this rounded waveform is called a sine wave okay uh, the little X that you see that's the uh, the trigger uh, and basically it's triggering halfway at the halfway point this is what we have to do and we, you just saw what we have to do and that's the glitch you're seeing a glitch now you can actually see the glitch a lot, a lot easier okay because what, what you did was compress the signal okay expand the wave uh, the time base uh, to about one minute okay 
Uh, if you go too, you know, if you go too much, then it, it'll take forever. And that's a glitch again. Okay, so you are seeing glitches uh, left and right on the wheel speed sensor signal. Okay, wheel speed sensor, vehicle speed sensor signal, uh, input speed sensor, output speed sensor for the transmission is the same thing. They they all have the same. Uh, now, and these are the glitches. Uh, the, the glitches are, they actually, since you're compressing the signal, you, you're packing so many cycles into the, into the screen, then it's easier for you to see it, okay? It's very easy for you to see. Uh, even if it happens very, very fast, uh, you can actually capture these glitches. Uh, the glitches are usually, it, it drops the signal down to ground, uh, so that's pretty much what you're seeing right now. Okay, and they look, you know, you you would never see a glitch like that uh, if you're just looking at, at at each cycle. That that was a very short uh, glitch. That's a very short glitch right there. No, so again, uh, there isn't anything special to this uh, technique, other than the fact that make sure you expand the time base uh, to about a, a minute or so, um, depending on the signal that you're trying to capture. Okay, and also make sure that your amplitude is right. Don't go, you could go a little higher than this if you want, uh, but basically, you know, make sure you, you're seeing the whole waveform, the whole cycle in front of you. Okay, and that's uh, basically, you know, the best way uh, to, to assess any glitches uh, on, the, uh, on, on the wheel speed sensor uh, signals. <coughs> now, uh, We'd like to thank you for tuning into our channel, uh, ADP Training, okay? And, and again, we're, gonna, we're, we're still going to show you, you know, the same technique here over and over again so that you actually understand it. Uh, so anyhow, so subscribe to our website, autodiagnosticsandpublishing.com. Uh, it'll, you'll see the email address in there. Uh, it is sales at autodiagnosticsandpublishing.com. No big deal. Uh, you can do a Google search for automotive diagnostics and publishing. Uh, we are always giving out free stuff like this software, for example, that you see in front of you, uh, which is used by many, many schools uh, throughout the country and in many uh, European and as far uh, also in uh, Australia and so on and so forth. They use it in, uh, in class for training. Uh, anyhow, so it's free to you. Uh, just request it. Uh, and that's about it. Okay. Um, uh, on our channel, you can actually subscribe to our, our channel, of course, I hope you do, or you did already. Uh, you can donate if you want, if you think that this uh, content is uh, useful to you. Uh, and basically, you know, uh, we, uh, we do everything automotive. Everything we do, uh, we, we make it, we manufacture it in-house, uh, made in the U.S. And so, you know, it's, uh, <coughs> and th we try to keep the channel free again uh, for the foreseeable future, okay? Um, so you know, uh, any any little bit, whatever you can, we can you can uh, help out, it helps out, okay. And of course, uh, post comments if you can uh, on any of our videos. Uh, we're always uh, getting comments uh, here and there. Uh, so we like to thank you again for tuning into our channel, ADP Training. This was a very, uh, a, it was a remake of the video that we actually came out with a bad audio, so we actually tweaked it. Uh, to, uh, so, uh, so, you know, so, so that it sounds better. Uh, we didn't know what happened, so anyhow, we, we, we deleted it and we posted it again. Anyhow, thank you for watching and tuning into our channel. Thank you. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another video. Uh, in this video, we are going to talk about the uh, TPS signal glitch blind spot capture. Um, on screen now, you can see, and uh, this is, a, we're going to do a very basic explanation. This is a uh, TPS. Typical TPS nowadays found on electronic throttle bodies. Uh, uh, on the TPS itself, you have the contacts for the motor, which is the one that moves the uh, uh, that, that moves the uh, the throttle. And these are the TPS uh, tracks. That's how they're called. This is a dual TPS, but it's it's the testing is the same. These tracks develop blind spots. Okay, there's no other way to put it. Now on screen, uh, we we're going to show you. What we did was pretty much, uh, we took a bunch of captures, you know, from the, uh, uh, using our electronic throttle body controller. So we, we took these captures and we recorded them on the, on the, on the oscilloscope, which we're going to show you next. Uh, 
of, of how to go about, uh, because once you have the, uh, the, the capture, which is a recording, then we can actually, uh, we can adjust the controls and the, the signal is already there. Uh, we're just pretty much, all what we have to do is adjust the controls to be able, uh, be able to uh, capture or show uh, the oscilloscope. And we, we did that with a bunch of different uh, 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 throttle bodies or TPSs and some good, some bad. And here we go. Okay, so again, we're going to use the, uh, the scope that we've been using from the beginning uh, to do the, uh, this sh uh, the, the course. This is an oscilloscope course. Now, we're going to show you how to do... The first thing you're going to do is you're going to connect the scope to the signal wire. Okay, and this is what you're going to see, all right? Uh, in this particular case, uh, you're going to see the signal go up and down. That's all you're going to see, unless you adjust the settings, okay? So basically, you would have to uh, uh, adjust the amplitude, like always, okay? And the frequency, which is the time base for the scope or any scope, okay? So this applies to uh, you name it. There's one thing that we're going to show you. And this is uh, coming up, we're going to show you uh, towards the middle of the video, uh, in a couple of, um, probably a minute or two, you're going to see it. We're going to show you how to set the, the, uh, the, the trigger, okay? Uh, right now it's on free triggering, okay? So it's, this is automatic triggering, free triggering, however you, you want to call it. You want to set it to single, single shot or single trigger. On any scope, that's usually how they word it out. They, it's single, it's called single, okay? Now, when you set the scope to single trigger, uh, basically, you're gonna be able to, you're gonna capture, and this is how you, if you look at it, this is how you set it, okay? Uh, you got off, auto, or normal, or single, okay? So single shot, you're just gonna capture the waveform, and the, the scope is gonna wait for the signal, and you're gonna see that coming up right now, okay? That's how we set it, okay? On this, on this particular scope, on every other scope, it's the same thing. Just look up the, your trigger options and you're going to see it, okay? And right now, the scope is waiting, okay? And this is what, what it captured, okay? Which is pretty similar to what you were seeing before, but then you have to mess around with the time base, and now this is what you see, okay? When you set it to single shot, you see a perfect, this is a perfect uh, uh, throttle position sensor. Okay, a perfect, and this you have to do with the dual, nowadays you have dual uh, TPSs, and this is what you're going to see, okay? Uh, we're going to see a bunch of different ones. So this is another good one, okay? And we're basically, we're showing you one after the other. Uh, good ones and bad ones, and I'll tell you where the, where the bad, bad ones are. Uh, and so, the scope waits for you, okay? This is doing it, the scope is doing this automatically, okay? When you set it to single shot, okay? It waits for you, and that's, I'll show you what a bad TPS uh, signal looks like. And this you can do very slow, very fast, however you want to do it, okay, on the scope, all right? And it, that's what it does. It, it points out to blind spots. Not yet. You haven't seen a blind spot yet, okay? If you keep looking at it, uh, we have one of, the, one of these captures that we did of a bad scope. I don't, I don't remember if it's uh, towards the end, or, but you're going to see it soon. Uh, and basically, what you're seeing is the, uh, uh, the potentiometer going up and down, up and down. This is another good one, okay? And it waits for you, for you to do the, the, the for, you to, for you to goose the throttle. So you're going to go, you're going to connect it, you're going to goose the throttle you're gonna, on, the, on the accelerator, because you can't touch it with your fingers. So you're going to go to the accelerator, you're going to goose the throttle, you know, op open and close. And you're going to see that. That's what you're going to see. That's, that's how it has to look like. Okay? Now, uh, I'm waiting for the bad signal so that you can see what it looks like. This is another good signal again and again. So, uh, basically what you're doing now, it's make you're, you're testing two things now. You're testing the upper voltage, making sure that the ECM is providing the 5 volt reference that it always gives you on the ground. Okay? This is another good, good uh, signal right now. Uh, and so, it's all you're doing is it, you're trying to capture something else other than what you just saw, okay? And in that particular, in, in, in cases like that, okay, you're going to see, I think this is coming up, the, the bad signal is coming up right now. 
and that's that's a blind spot almost in the towards the middle of, of the uh, not the downward line that's just because we disconnected it so towards the middle that's a blind spot okay now this is I think this is another blind spot that we have on the recording this is another blind spot right in the middle that's a blind spot you're not supposed to see that it has to you're supposed to see a slanted line nicely slanted going down okay because you accept that that's another blind spot almost to towards the end okay that's not good that's going to cause all kinds of problems with your transmission uh, your engine is not going to accelerate properly okay I think we left all the blind spots you know towards the end uh, of the video and so basically that's another blind spot right there so we took a bunch of different captures you know they all look the same but that's because all signals look the same pretty much okay and so uh, another blind spot in there okay and so basically what you're looking for is something other than the, a smooth slanted line going downwards and usually they show up on the downside in other words you, when you accelerate and you let go of the throttle sometimes somehow I don't know why did look at that one that's that's even worse you know so these are a bunch of bad uh, throttle position sensors that we uh, were able to capture and then show you uh, what a signal a throttle a faulty throttle position sensor looks like and how to do it and the secret of it is to set your trigger into into a single mode single shot okay so you wait for you right now the scope is waiting for you okay and, and all these tests is waiting for you uh, for you to goose the throttle step on the accelerator uh, uh, and let go that's another blind spot right there but you don't have to do anything all you got to do is connect it and just set it to single and that's it we'd like to thank you for tuning into our vi uh, to our videos uh, ADP training uh, our channel on YouTube it's ADP training we have a website uh, automotive diagnostics and publishing that's uh, your Google search or auto diagnostics and publishing dot com um, you can uh, request uh, a, a copy of this software uh, for training purposes and it, it's also a mild uh, low voltage uh, signals that you can actually use it for okay nothing high voltage okay and at sales at auto diagnostics and publishing dot com uh, feel free to uh, subscribe to our channel if you like it our website we are always giving out free stuff you know and uh, so anyhow uh, thank you for tuning into our channel and thank you for watching this channel is for do-it-yourselfers as well as professional auto repair technicians we present all the content using the latest CG animation techniques, on hands video, and how to, tips and techniques. We encourage you to subscribe to this channel now. Once subscribed, anytime we upload a new automotive tip, secret, or technology video, you will be notified. Finally, by subscribing, you will also be part of our weekly freebies. Yes, we're constantly giving away lots of free merchandise. Automotive Diagnostics and Publishing's Mandy Concepcion, the owner of this channel, is one of the most prolific auto technology authors on the web. At any moment in time, we may offer a free book, Kindle eBook, Android app, one of our own diagnostic equipment, or even auto repair software that runs on your PC. Subscribe now free of charge, learn lots of automotive technology secrets, and win free stuff. It doesn't get any better than that. Thanks for watching, and enjoy.